Hi, my name is Zach. Back in 2021, I applied to the Master of Arts screen in documentary filmmaking at AFTERS, the Australian Film, Television and Radio School based in Sydney. In October later that year, I was called to an interview over Zoom, and later that same month, I received my official offer to start the program in February 2022 this year. Um, however, I initially deferred my offer to 2023, but since then, I will prob I have decided that I'll probably turn down the offer altogether because I don't want to make the big move back to Australia from the UK, where I'm currently based right now. Nevertheless, I enjoyed the application process and I would like to share my experience with anyone else who might be interested in applying to the program. And so in this video, I'll be going through the entire process and explain how I approach each of the application tasks. Um, and so hopefully this will be helpful to someone. Before I get into the different stages of the application process, I'll briefly touch on the prerequisites to the course and the selection criteria as outlined on the course webpage. In the first instance, I would definitely recommend thoroughly reading through this webpage, which you can find linked in the description box below, and direct any further questions you have to the contact information they have listed there. For convenience, I've also included this contact information in the description box as well. Once on the course webpage, you can find more information on the prerequisites and selection criteria by navigating to the section titled Admissions Requirements. There it says the following. Applicants to postgraduate programs are required to hold a relevant undergraduate degree at bachelor level or to have completed equivalent work experience and or training. The typical duration of a bachelor degree is three to four years, and candidates applying by degree equivalents are required to demonstrate they have achieved corresponding learning outcomes by completing a similar volume of relevant work experience and or training. If you wish to apply for admission to a postgraduate program by degree equivalents, you will need to submit a degree equivalents form. For more information, please contact the admissions team at applications at afters.edu.au. I personally have two degrees in film studies, which it's important to note were entirely theoretical and contained no practical component whatsoever. So don't be deterred if you don't have a degree in practical filmmaking. However, that being said, when I was an undergraduate living in Sydney, I uh, attended several short courses in producing, filmmaking and screenwriting at AFTERS. Um, and I also instigated several of my own filmmaking projects in both fiction and documentary and I also interned as a data wrangler on a, real on a reality TV show so I was able to develop the skills necessary for my discipline through those extracurricular activities. You'll soon find out that you have to demonstrate that you do have these skills which segues into the selection criteria. You can find the selection criteria directly underneath the prerequisites. They are as follows. 1. Demonstrated experience or related skills relevant to discipline. 2. A distinct creative perspective. 3. A proven capacity for leadership and collaboration. 4. A willingness and capacity to engage in critical thinking, reflection and research. The first three will hopefully come across through your creative work, audiovisual statement and personal statement if you have been fostering some kind of creative practice. This can take a range of forms and can involve various mediums aside from film. I was able to easily demonstrate the fourth criterion by referring to the work I had completed during my two degrees in film studies, which inevitably involved critical thinking, reflection and research. If you are applying without an undergraduate degree, you will need to think of other times in your life when you engage these skills and clearly demonstrate this in your personal statement, audiovisual statement or creative work submission. Below the selection criteria, you'll find a link to an application rubric, which goes into even more detail about what the admissions team are looking for in a candidate. This is an extremely useful document and you can find a link to it in the description box below. Following this, they ask you to submit three supporting documents. A one-page resume demonstrating a list of your achievements, educational qualifications and work experience. A certified copy of your highest education level and proof of citizenship or residency in the form of a passport or birth certificate. 
Once you meet all of these prerequisites, you'll be in a good position to begin the application itself, which is comprised of three initial tasks and, if shortlisted, an interview and an extra task. The first application task is a three minute audiovisual creative statement that presents who you are as a creative practitioner. As per the course webpage, there is no set form here, you can record a piece to camera or make a work that expresses these ideas. When working on this task, the course webpage suggests exploring the following questions. How would you define your creative voice? What kind of stories connect with you and why? Do you think stories matter and why? How do you collaborate with other creative practitioners? My creative statement was a three minute video essay that was similar in form to the videos that you can find on this channel. I wrote a script and recorded myself reading it out loud. Following this, I placed the audio track over text, photos and clips from films that complemented what I was talking about. I answered all four of the suggested questions to consider, placing emphasis on how I define my creative voice, my influences and collaborative process. In particular, I opened my creative statement with a quote by a filmmaker and academic that I resonate with and explained its significance in my education as a film scholar. From there, I segued into a brief articulation of my views on the medium of cinema as it relates to the documentary genre and made references to films, filmmakers and theorists that have informed both my creative process and scholarly interests. To conclude the creative statement, I provided a brief overview of my approach to collaboration and the benefits it brings to the creative process. The second task in the application process is a creative work submission. This should demonstrate your best work. The course webpage specifies that you can submit up to three examples of your work as a key creative and the total running time should be no more than 15 minutes or 30 pages. It also states that these works can include any format, fiction, non-fiction, experimental, film, video or other digital and online forms, linear or non-linear music scores. In particular, they advise that your creative submission should effectively demonstrate your creative intent and your technical and or craft skills related to the discipline you are applying for. You must also submit a portfolio alongside this creative submission which clearly outlines your role on the work submitted. For my creative work, I submitted the first 15 minutes of an experimental landscape film I made in 2020 and 2021 called Port Meadow. The full 30 minute film can be viewed on this channel and I've provided a link to it in the description box below and at the end of this video if you would like to watch it. In my portfolio, I specified that my submission was a 15 minute extract of a longer work and divided the remainder of the document into four main sections, namely my roles on the project together with a synopsis, stills from the film, a director's statement, and a list of all of my credits in other films and television work I had done. The director's statement articulated my motivation behind making the film and what I was trying to achieve. For anyone applying without an undergraduate degree, this would be a great place to demonstrate your capacity for critical reflection. The final application task is to write a personal statement. On this task, the course web page instructs that you write a one-page outline of your key objectives for studying at afters. You may include information such as your personal history, your goals and ambitions, and where you see yourself at the completion of this program. When writing my personal statement, I followed these exact guidelines. One page is not a lot of space, so I jumped straight into my key objectives for studying the course in my introduction. Following this, I gave a brief overview of my personal background in academia and how my interest in documentary and experimental filmmaking developed alongside my studies. I also touched on relevant filmmaking projects that I was involved in, such as Port Meadow, the film I used as my creative submission. And to conclude my personal statement, I summarised what I was hoping to achieve by the end of the programme and my future ambitions following the completion of the course. After completing these three tasks and gathering together all of my supporting documents, I submitted my application in August. By mid-September, I had received news that I made it to round two of the application process, which was an interview with the head of department, Richard Welch, and two other practitioner assessors. I was also instructed to complete an additional task for the interview. This task was a 500-word critical reflection of a documentary of my choice. 
I was required to articulate the film's strengths, weaknesses, and my own personal connection to the film's style, subject, and themes. I could choose any mode of documentary and any length, whether it be a short, feature, or series. Please note, I'm not certain if this same task is sent to all shortlisted candidates or how it differs for other disciplines. Once I completed the extra task, I sent it back to the admissions team before my interview, which was held on the 1st of October. The interview itself ran for about 30 minutes, and in it we got to discuss the program in a bit more detail, and we went over my application as well as the extra task. The tone of the interview was quite relaxed, and the main focus was to get to know me better as a person. Um, after the interview stage was over, it took another three weeks before I finally received my official offer. With all that being said, I hope this video will be helpful to someone who might be interested in applying to the program. Um, if you have any more questions about my personal experience with the application process, you can let me know in the comments section below and I'll try to get back to you as best as I can. Um, and as mentioned, if you have any more general queries, you can direct them to the admissions team at the emails also listed in the description box below. Good luck with the application.